What's going on everybody? Chris Esplin here with more How to Firebase. Today, we're gonna to cover Node.js, how to connect to Firebase with a Node.js client. Great thing about Node.js, it's really similar to the browser. In fact, SDK is almost identical. So whatever you learn for Node.js works great for web. These concepts will translate really well to iOS and Android, also to Java. So let's get started. First off, here's the code. I have run npm install save Firebase. That adds Firebase to my project. All right, so we can even, we can watch how that runs there. It's running, great. Next, I'm gonna require Firebase in and I'm gonna just initialize it. I can do it in the exact same line. I'm gonna initialize it with a little object, initialization object that takes two attributes, service account and database URL. These have gotta be spelled just right. Uh, capital A on service account and capital URL. Now, you'll notice that my database URL matches the database that I'm going to use here on Firebase, quiver2.firebase.com. And you'll notice my service account, I've already generated it. It's right here in this folder, quiver2 service account JSON. It's right there. They're really easy to generate. You go to console.cloud.google.com. Make sure you're in the correct project. If you're in a different project, Tough luck, it's not gonna work for you. Then you go over to your API manager, you can get to it over here as well. And credentials. Once you get to credentials, you can go create a service account key. It's pretty straightforward. You can, I usually just create a new service account key, give it some name and download it. Okay, piece of cake. Then you get your file, you put it in your folder and you've got, I like to rename it, to something service-account.json and I have my configured Firebase. Next, I'm gonna save messages. So I'm gonna create just a, an arbitrary message. It'll be text is hey guys and timestamps a new date string. Now I've got a message, I'm going to create a ref. Ref is going to, you're gonna make refs with firebase.database.ref and you can pass some path in here, any path you like or you can pass nothing and call dot child. So in this case, I'm just gonna call dot child. So it's going to create a root ref down to my root, which is quiver2, quiver-2.firebrysero.com slash nothing. And then I'm going to do child node client. So now we're at quiver2 slash node client. And this ref references this point, this node client node. Next, we're gonna create a logs ref and then a messages ref, because I wanna save data in two spots. I'm gonna log all the messages and I'm gonna save them where users can presumably access them. So I'm gonna call ref.childlogs and ref.childmessages. We're gonna have two new refs. Next, we're gonna make a message. And we're gonna push it. When you push, when you call dot push, you create a new record with the new key and the key is auto-generated by Firebase. It's what's called a push key. Now let's quickly cover push keys. Push keys are really important to Firebase because Firebase cannot support a zero indexed array. If you think about it, that'd be insane. There's no way for a database to manage multiple connected clients with a zero indexed array. Let's say you had five elements, zero, one, two, three, and four, and 10 people, 10 clients at the same time decided to push a new record. So now they're all gonna try to push to record five. Now that's crazy. It won't work, the, the records will all collide the pushes will fail. So instead what Firebase does is it allows you to call dot push, which creates a unique identifier. These identifiers, they look like gibberish, but they're not. These identifiers are effectively timestamps. Let that sink in for just a second. They're basically timestamps. They sort as timestamps and you'll see me create a whole bunch of them in just a minute. And they'll sort as if by magic as timestamps. They sort to the millisecond so if five people push within the same millisecond, their records will all sort in a jumble. But every millisecond after that will sort correctly. Also, because they look like gibberish, well, they look like gibberish because they have a whole bunch of randomness thrown in. So they're not just gonna collide. They're not just timestamps. All right, those are push keys. Push keys are critical to Firebase. If you don't understand push keys, you're not gonna have any luck with Firebase. 
So let's move on. Now we're gonna push, this will create a new record. Just so you can see what this looks like so far, I'm going to run my favorite node runner, Nodemon. Every time I, Nodemon's great. Every time you change anything in this folder, it will just rerun the file. So I can run it just by changing, by saving the file. Okay, so run nodemon.js. And you'll see right here, we've got a pushed message. So messages ref got a new message pushed and it got this new key, dash capital K, capital U, capital X, blah, 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 blah. Now what I've done here is I've also saved this record to the logs. Notice the next line down, line 11, has logsref.child and the child I'm giving it is messageref.key. Key is an attribute on the ref that I just pushed. So when I created this new ref, when I pushed a new message, I got a new ref. And I can call dot .key off that ref to get the same key. Then I call dot .set and it'll set the message to this new child. So it'll set the message to log slash this crazy push key and my data will land just the same as it did for messages. And that's great. Now I've also gone ahead and queried this data. So I'm just querying the logs ref. I'm first doing logsref.orderbyKey, saying I want to order by key. That'll, it will by default order by key, but I've got to specify it because the next thing I'm gonna do is limit to last. I just want to get the last record. I don't wanna get any more. I could say limit to five and I get the last five records. In this case, I just wanna get the last one. And I'm gonna to listen to the child added event. Any children get added to this logs ref, I hear about it and I get a snapshot. Snapshot is a Firebase data snapshot. I call it snapshot.val to get the value. You'll notice down here, I have, I've logged out added with that value. Look at that. Now I'm also listening to child removed events, child changed events, and the value event. Now the value event fires anytime anything changes on this logs ref. So here, this is a little, let's say logs ref to make this a little more clear. Instead of ref.child logs, logs ref, there we go. So you'll see it run again. You'll see the records get added. You'll see added still just shows the last record. It's just the latest. But then you'll notice the value returns both of the log records. This all gets returned to the value event. Okay, quick note, these four different events are critical. You gotta understand them to understand Firebase. First event to understand, the value event. The value event fires for any change at all. But not just that, it fires for an initial payload. So you call the, eva the value event, you get all the data back initially. And then anytime anything changes, you get the callback called again. This is super useful for keeping some part of your memory in sync with Firebase. So I can keep a local variable in sync at all times with the data in a ref. It's great, especially in the browser. Of course, it's not as useful in your node client because you're not saving data in your node client, but in your browser, you're trying to present data. It's really great to listen to the value event in the browser. Now the other three events, child added, child removed and child changed are really critical. First off, let's cover child added. Child added, if you don't limit to last at all, limit to anything, you just run some ref dot on child added, it will return individually every single record that exists at that endpoint, at that ref. So you'll get, let's say you have 10 records, you'll get all 10 as individual callbacks, and then any new records will get added as a, a new callback. So as you push, say, an 11th record, you'll get an 11th firing of that callback with that 11th record in it. That's why I like to limit my child added events. I like to limit them, I'll call order by key dot limit to last one. So I just get the very last record, that will load initially, and then I get any new records that get added after that. Now child changed and child removed are a little bit different. It's not as useful to limit to last or, or you know, to try to manage your queries on child changed and child added. You really just listen to them and you can then sync up any changes or any removals appropriately. 
Um, you're not gonna, when you call child change, you don't automatically get all existing records. Same with removed. You don't get all the records. That's just child added. So use them appropriately to keep your apps in sync with your Firebase. All right, let's move back to more code. Now we've seen the child added event being used correctly, the child removed, child changed. We haven't seen those yet. So let's do those real quick. So we are just tracking logs. So I'm just going to say, hey, text, hey, you guys. Oh, look at that. I get a changed event. Hey, you guys. I also get the value event. That's going to fire as well because it fires whenever anything changes. Now let's remove. Let's just get rid of it. Delete. It's gone. So I get a removed. I get that removed. It's no longer in the database, but I get the whole snap anyway in the removed event. And then my value event fires and you see it's gone in the value event. Thus far, I've left out transaction. You can run transactions in Firebase. It's, it's really useful. So let's look real quick, do a demo about transactions. Every new child added, we're going to do logs ref dot child count dot transaction function i there we go all right so let's hop back here and we're going to look at transaction transaction takes any old ref you call dot transaction on it and you pass in a function a function takes in this case, I'm going to call it i, but it takes a value. This is the value that exists currently in that spot. And then you just return back the value that you want to, in this case, increment. So I say, hey, uh, logsref.count, every time a child gets added, I'm going to call this transaction on logsref.count. I'm going to take whatever exists there and increment it. And you'll notice every time I run this, this goes up. Now I'm adding two, for some reason I'm adding two. So this is getting called twice. Got a bit of an issue here. Oh, right, because it gets called once and then gets called again when, <laughs> so the transaction is firing another child added event. That's, that's gonna be an issue. We don't actually want that. So let's just do every time it runs, every time it runs, it'll do it. We won't do it within a child added event because that's insane. All right. So let's just clear this off and we can show how this works from scratch. All right, so added one, let's run it again. Hey, okay, added two and we're gonna get a third. Now I'd like to cover one more way to change your data. It's called update and it accepts multi-path updates. So you can get really, really fancy with update. How about payload var payload equals log keys ref dot key and we're gonna say some other path let's do hey guys again all right and then we just call ref dot update payload. All right, let's let this run again. There. So you'll see it saves something to log key, then it saves something to some other path. Hey guys again. Update is fantastic. It lets you update your data in as many spots as you want simultaneously. It's an atomic transaction. So I love using update, I use it quite a bit. I don't use transaction as much. I use push constantly, especially just to get these push keys. You can just create a push ref just to get a key and use it however you like. I like to use shared keys across my data, so that's a great way to structure my data. Hey, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to get the rest of my videos straight to your YouTube feed. And that's all I got today, so I'll see you next time. Bye.